So one of the comments I got on the uh, Double Balance Mixers video is whether I was planning on doing a uh, version of the mixer with the FST 3253, uh, the same uh, multi multiplexer, demultiplexer that I've used in the receiver side. Um, I wasn't thinking of it, uh, but I think I'll go ahead and do it. I think that's a good uh, a good suggestion. So this is the schematic uh, that I've got for it. Um, now some of this is is similar to what I've built up before, so you'll see this this part is exactly the same uh, as the IQ uh, phase shift network that I did before. So the audio signal comes in here, and basically it's split into the I and the Q signals with this phase shift network uh, after passing through this buffer amplifier, which gives the uh, signal a 2.5 volt DC bias. So the bit that's different on uh, the FST3253 version of the mixer is obviously this portion right here. So step one in, the, um, in preparing an FST3253 mixer is the zero and the 90 degree signals aren't enough for the mixer. You need zero, 90, but you also need 180 and 270. Um, and they're all fed into the mixer in the four channels. So this is kind of... Uh, exactly the opposite that uh, that we're doing on the receiver. If you recall on the receiver, we actually get out the 90, uh, 0, 90, 180 and 270 signals. So this is a simple uh, op amp network here that uh, extracts that 0, 90, 180 and 270. Then I have this uh, a series of sampling capacitors here and that goes into the uh, same eight input pins on the FST3253 that are the actual the output pins on the uh, on the receiver. Now the other thing I need to feed into the 3253 mixer is the uh, LO signals in quadrature so 0 and 90 degrees and they go into pin 14 and 2 of the FST3253. And then the RF signals come out of pin 7 and 9 and just as we uh, uh, combine those in the uh, double balance mix. So we have an RF combiner here, which combines those signals, the result of which is that single sideband output. So that's the, um, I've already spun the board for this. Uh, here it is right here. It actually didn't turn out as, uh, as, well, as, as well as usual. There's a, there's a few sort of uh, streaks on the board, but you can see I've already got the uh, the power supply part of the board uh, installed. Here's a 7805, an SMD version. I've got a filter cap here, and then there's, there's two filter caps on the output side, one for the, uh, uh, the 2.5 volt bias. Uh, so there's two 10K resistors here that, that form a resistor divider, gives me 2.5 volts. So I've pulled together the, um, uh, the five volt uh, portion, the power supply portion of this. What I'll move on to next is this portion, which is the audio input. And then I have the buffer amplifier here. And then the, as you've seen before, the, uh, the, the um, uh, phase shift network, which consists of these two op amps here and here. And then after that's done, I'll build up the remainder of the circuit. Okay, so this is just a quick update on the, uh, the first portion of the board. That's the buffer amplifier and the phase shift network. Um, so you can see here, uh, if I just pan over to the signal generator, I'm injecting a one kilohertz signal at uh, 100 millivolts peak to peak. I've got uh, the board set up here. So here's, uh, I'm probing the output here and here, injecting the signal here. And uh, so here's where I'm probing these two outputs here. Here's where I'm injecting the signal in over here. And you can see indeed that the uh, signals are coming out and uh, at 90 degrees uh, offset to one another, or very close to it. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to accurately measure the phase offset just uh, by eyeballing it on the scope. But anyway, that's the first por portion of the, the circuit done. What I'll do now is move on to um, the 090, uh, 180 and 270 uh, generation part of the circuit. Uh, so that consists of these two op amps. And uh, so I'll build that up and then I'll confirm that I'm getting the the desired phase offsets um, output from that and that'll come up next. Okay so I've pulled together this part of the uh, circuit which uh, uh, gives out the 90, uh, the 0, 90, 180 and 270. If you just pan up onto the oscilloscope uh, so I'm probing all those four points and you can see there's a very nice, uh, I've got all full cha four channels enabled 
probing those points and you can see there's a, a very nice 0, 90, uh, 180 and 270 uh, output there which is required for the next stage. Um, so same setup on the uh, on the signal generator uh, and you can see there it's, it's one kilohertz uh, input so now obviously if I change to two kilohertz I should get that um, if everything's working right, I should get that same uh, split of frequencies. Um, now, obviously, you don't want the, the phase shift uh, component to, to sort of vary the phase across fre frequencies. It does actually do that, um, but uh, the idea is that uh, uh, there is as little as possible of that. Um, so basically, that's uh, this portion of the circuit complete. I'm sampling right here on the four outputs. So everything back here is all good what i'll move on to next uh, and it, again this is always the tricky part is this portion of the circuit here the fs23253 is the sort of the, the network of sampling capacitors here um, and then really uh once i hook that up to the local oscillator coming in here we'll be in a position to to sample the output here and confirm that we're getting the right signals out there anyway that's to come up next so here's the complete mixer ready for testing. Uh, Note, unfortunately, I can't do a direct comparison from the results I did in the previous video uh, because on this board, I've actually got the phase shifter uh, on the board itself, whereas in the previous tests, I was injecting zero and 90 degrees from the signal generator um, and I didn't have the phase shift network. So you can see uh, when I show you the results, the phase shift network introducing that introduces a whole pile of... Uh, interesting nasty stuff but we'll uh, we'll get to that so just walking through the setup um i have a one uh, kilohertz signal coming in here from the signal generator and that's at half a volt peak to peak i have uh the zero and 90 degree lo signals at 7.15 megahertz coming in here and that's from the si5351 controlled by the pi board and then I'm sampling the output here, uh, and then I'm sending that to, uh, to the spectrum analyzer. So let's just walk through that on the actual board itself. So here's the board here. Here's the two LO inputs. Well, let me just pan up a little bit so you can see it. Here's the two LO inputs right here, 0 and 90 degrees. Here's the uh, audio signal being injected here. And then here is uh, where the... Uh, the output signal is being captured and sent to the spectrum analyzer. So just going through before, here's the buffer amplifier, here's the phase shift network, here's that uh, op amp network that grabs the 0, 90, 180, 270. Uh, here's the sampling capacitors here, here's the FST3253 right here, here's my RF combiner, and then here's the output right here. So in this particular configuration uh, with the positioning of the, the LO, um, I'm, actually, uh, I'm actually suppressing the lower sideband. So in other words, the upper sideband is, is coming through. So let's just go over to the uh, spectrum analyzer and see what's, uh, see what's happening there. So just to quickly describe it, uh, let me get to the peak there. So here's the peak here at 7.151147. So this is the actual upper sideband signal that I'm emitting. Here's the carrier right here. So if I just do left peak, you can see there's the carrier there, 7.15160. And then if I go to the left to the left peak, here's the lower here's the actual suppressed lower sideband. Now one of the interesting things about this is there's a whole range of other products coming through here. And they're not coming from the signal generator. Um, so they must be coming from my phase shift network. Um, and I, I did see the same thing with the other mixer. So this isn't a product either of the, of the mixer itself. So just to prove it's all working, I'll swap the LO signals around as I did, as I did in the, pro the previous videos. So let me just, uh, it's a little bit tricky, but let me unplug the, uh, one of the LO signals and you should see that double sideband appear. So there's the double sideband. Let me swap over the LO. So I'm, I'm unplugging the other LO and it should go down to nothing. Plug it back in on the other side. Bear with me. 
His uh, SMA connectors are a little bit fiddly. So there's the uh, double sideband appearing again. And then finally, when I, unplug, when I plug in the other LO side, now you can see that the other side band's appearing. So now this is the lower side band. Um, so just by swapping the position of the, uh, of the LO, uh, I can change between upper and lower side band. And uh, you can do that in software too. So I can actually change the phase um, between, the, uh, between the two signals on the SI5351 in software. So that's an easy way of changing between upper and lower side band. But just panning out on the, so you can see the full breadth of, uh, of what's going on. Let me increase the span to 100 kilohertz. And look at all that mess there. Um, so that's, uh, you know, even all the way out here, I'm still, you now it's, it's a fair way down. It's, it's, it's obviously like minus 57 dB, uh, you know, dBs, but it's still all there. And this will all be, go out of the, of the transmitter side. So, so it's not a great thing. Let, let me just uh, increase the frequency to two kilohertz and you'll see, you'll see a similar thing there. Now note how some of these have now come up. So this, so this peak right here is the lower side band and then this is all the, the lower side band side um, and here's the upper side band side and you can see that I've got a whole range of other products here and like I said then that's not coming from the signal generator so I think as a final test uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, unhook the signal generator and I'll plug in that uh, that microphone amplifier that uh, I built up in a previous video and we'll see how uh, we'll see sort of an end-to-end -end process in there so I'll unplug the uh, uh, signal generator as you can see all that's left is the carrier itself and let me plug in my microphone okay so I'm not whistling very well today but as you can see uh, as you can see there that that's uh, responding to my uh, responding to my voice now uh, this is one of the things that uh, I'm still uh, sort of to figure out is uh, how exactly to suppress that all that other uh, kind of harmonic garbage that's uh, that's appearing in the signal so I'm gonna have to do some more research on that I'm sure there's a way of doing it um, more to come so as a final test let's uh, uh, put the speaker near the the um, microphone, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how the uh, um, we'll basically see how the spectrum analyzer responds to that. So let me turn the volume up. So as you can see there, uh, the, uh, uh, the spectrum analyzer is uh, picking up uh, not only, the, not only the, um, the primary tone, but there's a whole pile of uh, harmonics in there. So the unfortunate thing is, uh, I mean, that's basically going to be, uh, going to be splatter, uh, which, uh, which you definitely want to try and avoid at all costs um, when, you're, when you're transmitting. Um, I've got the span set now to, let's see what the span is set to, 50 kilohertz. So you can see all that, uh, all that uh, muck either side of the, of the signal there. And that's, you know, if you, if you hook this up to an amplifier or an antenna, that's all going out the, uh, out the antenna, which is undesirable. Um, so anyway, I mean, obviously, it's, uh, it's a fair way down. It's uh, 30 dB or so down from the primary signal, but all the same... Um, I think you have to be at least 50 to 60 dB down to meet uh, to meet the uh, FCC regs. So uh, definitely, this wouldn't be uh, something you could just put on the air and uh, at, at the way it is right at the moment. Anyway, um, let me uh, put this to a halt uh, now. Um, I'm I'm going to do a bit more research to see if I can uh, figure out a way of uh, getting rid of all that other 
all that other noise. Perhaps I need to have higher tolerance components in the phase shift network. Perhaps I need to use a uh, uh, a uh, three pole, uh, sorry, a six pole phase, phase shift network instead of a instead of just the uh, uh, the four pole one. So lots of experimenting to uh, to continue with here. Anyway, that's a wrap for now.